Shalom. Oh, good. Shalom. All right. <clears throat> We're going back now to Moses and Aaron going into Paro and tell him, telling him to let the Jewish people go. <sighs> so God is sending them. God already went, the, the, they already went to Paro once. And Paro told them to get lost. It's not going to help me. It just made things worse. So now they're going in for the second time. So it says Moses was not 80 years old, and Aaron, <clears throat> Moses was 80 years old, and Aaron was 83 years old when they spoke to Paro. <clears throat> That's when they first spoke to Paro. God spoke to um, uh, 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 and Aaron, and he said like this. Yeah. yeah. When Paro uh, speaks to you, Laymore, he says, Let's have some sort of a proof. A proof of what Rashi says. Oh, a sign. This, in this case, this word tzorech, it should say tzoroch. means that you've got the power. Let's see, you're coming and representing this God, and you're telling me to do things. Let, let's see the, the God that you're representing have some sort of power. What, what's going on here? Moses and Aaron, uh, they're coming into to Paro to do him a favor. That's what they're trying to tell him. Listen, we're doing a favor, Paro. We represent this God who's really, really powerful. He creates the whole world, creates the heavens and the earth. <clears throat> and he can just, you know, stop creating you. He can do it every once. But, but we're giving you a chance. We want to be nice to you. Despite the fact that you've made the Jews suffer for so long, Okay, that's been God's will also, but we're giving you a chance. You can avoid all of this uh, uh, trouble, right? The God that we represent, he wants to destroy you totally, totally. But we're giving you a chance to avoid all this. Let the Jews go. Let them go, and then there won't be any problems. And so <clears throat> Paro says, why should I accept this risk? Maybe you don't even represent anybody. Maybe you're just coming in here. And you're, you're just amazing, brave bluffers. And you don't really represent anybody at all. So he said, give me some sort of a power that you represent a God. At Zurich, but Misha Shalech, let's see the one who's sending you, if he has any abilities. Here we have a Kli Yucker. Let's see if I can find this one. <clears throat> I didn't make it as a... Okay, let's see. So it says, what is he supposed to do? Okay. Give me a sign that you represent your God, you represent this powerful. But Marta, I'll answer. Speak to Aaron, take your staff, throw it on the ground in front of Paro, and it'll become a tanin. A tin, tanin is a big, um, sort of a, a powerful snake. It could be, oh, it's, it's a an alligator or a crocodile or whatever. Here, the Kliyakar says, <clears throat> here it says that Aaron should take his staff and it becomes uh, a, a, a snake. And above, in Parshat Shmot, Moses, he took his staff and it became a snake. <clears throat> There's a lot of different opinions about why exactly it happened. Some say, some people say the tanin is different. The tanin, some people say that a tanin is like some sort of a big fish, like Rashi explains, a tanin in Magdolim, like a crocodile or something. Some people say that a tanin is also a snake, and that seems to be, that's what Rashi says. Rashi says that this tanin 
It's the same thing. Then there's more, the same thing that Moses did back there to to the Jewish to to the Jewish people. He threw it on the ground, the kind of snake. As this is the same thing he's doing here. Okay. Um, it says maybe we can say that because the Jewish people, that in front of Jewish people, the staff turned to be a snake. To show you in the beginning that the Jewish people, no, this is not the one that I wanted to do. I'm sorry, one second. I mean, all of them are good. One second, all of them are good. But... I should have <coughs> written down to what it is. All right, this is not the one that I wanted. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, there's different opinions about what the snake is. I, I don't even remember what this was. I went over it. I went over it and prepared it, but I don't. I didn't put down exactly which one it is. Okay, why should it be a snake? <clears throat> because Paro called himself the Great Serpent. And it's a Haftorah. He's the Great Serpent. So Moses is making him a sign. Here he seems to indicate that it's, it's not exactly a, a snake. It's some sort of a big... So anyway, just like, so he said, just like a snake, it, uh, how does it go? It, uh, it, it curves itself. It, uh, it doesn't go straight. It curves itself. The same thing with Paro. You're, you're a crooked person. That's why he's doing this first as the first sign. Olivia loved Nega to say that he was an evil person. Ki Russia haya lecha. You, you evil person, you shouldn't have under, you should have understood <clears throat> on the first paro. Remember the paro, he kidnapped uh, Sarah and <clears throat> Sarah, and that uh, he didn't get any benefit from it. But Sar Avram, and he made trouble to Avram. So therefore, you should have learned from him. Now you're a paro, and we're going to make trouble for you. Okay, Moses and Aaron came to paro. And they did what God commanded them. He threw down, Aaron threw down his stick in front of Paro and his servants, and it became this big tanin. And he, that's what Rashi says, a nachash, a, a serpent. <clears throat> Paro. So Paro called also to his <clears throat> wise men and his mechashfim and his sorcerers, and they did the same thing. <clears throat> also, Chartomi Mitzrayim. Also, the um, the um, the wizards of uh, Egypt did the same thing, Bilatayim, with their witchcraft. It says, what's Latayim? Is Lachishatam? Says Rashi that they whispered, they said they had these words, etc. And Rashi says there is, there's no other word like that, and there's no comparison to it in the Torah. <clears throat> so they threw down. Uh, his stick, and it became a snake. They did it just like Moses did it. But Yivla Mata Aaron, but the staff of Aaron swallowed up their staffs. What do you mean their staffs? He, he swallowed their snakes, didn't it? So he says, since they all returned back to be staffs again, so then Staff of Aaron swallowed up their staffs. Now you could figure that the snake of Aaron would swallow because snakes have mouths, but staffs don't. So staffs don't have any mouth. So obviously it could be this is some sort of a of a miracle that happened. I mean, how does how did his staff swallow up their staffs? So the Sifrono, he's going according to a thing. He said that the staffs of the uh, the wise men of the, the Egyptian sorcerers, they became, they, they took the form of a snake, but they couldn't move. They weren't moving like snakes. And then it says that, therefore, they really always remained staffs. They just had the shape of a snake. That's what he says. That's what the Sophrono says. And, and then the staff of our own swallowed up their staffs. In other words, Aaron's staff really turned into an actual live snake. And their staffs just looked like snakes. 
And therefore, they always really were staffs. So God showed a miracle alone, Shuanotain and the Sham of Aruch, because God gives soul and spirit. But the the sorcerers, they couldn't put life into their staffs. They just remained staffs, but they were in the shape of a snake. That's why it says that Aaron's snake turned back into a staff. <clears throat> a staff is not a live thing, right? I mean, it's it's a, at best, it's in the vegetable world. And a snake is in the animal world. So is animal snake turned back to be a, sna a staff? And then it swallowed up the staffs of the sorcerers, which really didn't never turned into be animals anyway. They just assumed the, faith, the, the shape. Anyway, the God, the Yechazak Lev Paro, and uh, the heart of Paro hardened. In other words, he became, um, say, self confident. It doesn't say that God did it to him. We learned about that before. This was the nature of Paro, below Shemalihim. He was a kin. He did just like God said. Okay, a couple little miracles. My, my, my sorcerers couldn't make it alive. Big deal. But, but that's not a reason I'm going to let. You know, these millions of Jews just get out. Mayomer Hashem el Moshe. God said to Moshe, Kaved leiv paro. The heart of heart, paro's heart is become hardened. The in shalach et ha'am. He's not going to let the people go. His heart became hard, hardened. Lech el Paro, go another time to Paro. This time you don't have to go into his palace. Hine Yotzea Maima, he's coming out of the Nile River. What's he doing in the Nile River? <clears throat> Rashi says, he's coming out of the wild. He went into the Nile River to go to the bathroom. Paro did not build a toilet in his house for himself, in his palace. He didn't have a palace. Why? Because he didn't need one. Or so he said to everyone. He's, he said he's God, and he doesn't have to go to the bathroom. That for them is the sign <clears throat> of God. Gods don't go to the bathroom. And he said he's a God. He's in, And he's going into the water in the Nile River to unite with his spiritual source. The fact of the matter, he's going to the into the Nile River to go to the bathroom. <laughs> he had to go to the bathroom. He made himself to be a god. He said he doesn't have to go to relieve himself. He's got no waste products. He's pure. So we wake up early in the morning. And we go to the river. And he would go into the river. And he would go to the bathroom. In the now you have to remember something else. I mean, bad enough that he was, you know, fooling, trying to fool the people, but you know, everybody there believed that the Nile River was God, and now he's going to the bathroom on his God, or in his God, or whatever you want to call it. So, <clears throat> okay. So God says, "Oh, here we go. Let's go." So it says. Go to Paro in the morning. He's coming out of the water, and he's standing. Stand over there. Nitzavta likraso al sfateyar. You should stand opposite him on the water. And take the staff in your hand. He said, "Right to Moshe." Now this time he's telling Moshe, "Take your staff." Say to him. Hashem Elokei God, the God of the Hebrews, Shalachani Lech is sending me to you. Then Moshe Ami, send the Jewish people the Abduni, and they will serve me. Now this is a very basic thing that God is sending the Jewish people, and this is the message that He wants to convey to Paro and also to us that the reason we got out of Egypt was to serve God. We didn't just get out of Egypt to get out of Egypt, right? We're just free people now, which that might have been. You know, sufficient just to be free, but God said, "No, you're not. You're not free. Exactly the opposite. You're, you're free to serve me. You're free from power, but you're free to serve me. Send the people that they should serve me in the desert." Listen, you haven't listened to me up to now. 
it says, ad ko, what does it mean, ad ko, up to now? And so Rashi says, this is going to be a big hint. It takes it from a midrash. You're not going to listen to me. He's giving a prophecy. You're not going to listen to me until you hear from me the plague of the firstborn. But that's the last plague. She'ef bo, what's it got to do with ko? This is the only plague where God, Moses says to Paro, ko amar Hashem, this, like this God says, ke at the middle, in the middle of the night, all of your firstborn are going to die. The word ko means like this. Usually Moses always prophesies with this is what God said. But the, the plague of the firstborn, he said, like, it's going to be like this God said. Like, because the fact that he did kill all the Egyptian children at, at midnight, but he was worried that maybe the uh, sorcerers would have a little, their clocks wouldn't work 100%. And they would all agree that it wasn't exactly at midnight. It was a, a second before, a second after. And they were looking for any chance that they could <clears throat> to see that the God of the Jews is uh, not potent or that he doesn't know what he's doing. He's not omniscient or he doesn't. So he made a mistake. So God said, is, Moses said, it's going to be something around half midnight. Something like this, said God. It's only that, all the rest of the plagues he said, this is what God says, that God says this. Only That's what it means. <clears throat> Ad ko, you're not going to listen to me until you hear these words ko, which that, that I'm going to say only in the 10th plague. <clears throat> ko amar Shem, this is what God says. One second. Give me one moment, please. Yeah. Now you're going to know that I'm going to hit with my staff on my, with my hand on the water. Which is in the river. And it will transform to be blood. What do you mean blood? Because rain does not come down in Egypt. The whole <coughs> Egypt is um, uh, irrigated by the Nile River. The Nile River, when it raises up, <coughs> it inundates the whole, but it irrigates all of Egypt. In Egypt, they serve the, this river. Therefore, a, if the first thing Moses is striking, their, <coughs> their God. That's the first plague. I mean, I see here it also says ko amar Hashem, so I'll have to look into that, why it is. I mean, here he says, you're not going to listen to me until ko, and here the next, the first play he says ko. So, okay, but question, I have a question, but I hope you have the same question. We'll try to figure it. And I mean, obviously, Rashi, so the next one. Oh, oh, here it goes. Kliakar, here's a beautiful Kliakar. There's a couple really knockout Kliakars over here, and here's one of them. The reason he says, Yedia, I will know. In this you will know that I am God. Why in this one he's going to know? There's going to be nine more plagues also. The reason it says over here on this, that I'll, you'll know that I am God, because the Nile was for the Egyptians, was a God. Therefore, when God struck this Nile River and turned it into blood, he said, in this you're going to know that I am God. I'm going to make a judgment in your, in your God. That's what he says, I am God, because this name of God, yud ke vav ke, indicates, like the rabbi said, also says in the Zohar, that God wanted to say that he is, this has all the letters of existence. Haya, and the letters of God's name are Yud, and then He, Vav, He. So God is Haya, Hove, Viyeh. And all the letters of past, present, and future. And it was all being comes from God. <clears throat> he wants to say that when said all existence in a when when you get when I smite the river, 
you're going to see that God, he's the one that actually creates this river. Who, and he sustains it constantly. We call eight. Look, <clears throat> Asher Yechvos, and, when, and whenever he de desires, he can make it into something else. Instead of being a river of water, it becomes a river of blood. Here's the Kliyakar. Here's the Kliyakar. This is a, sort of a long one, but okay, let's go. <clears throat> this language, in order that you should know, <clears throat> <clears throat> this was said in the first plague of Datsach, the first plague of Adash, and the first plague of Bachav. Okay, the, in the night of the Seder, the Passover Seder, <clears throat> we remind the, uh, ourselves of the ten plagues that uh, God gave to Egypt. And on each one of the plagues, we spill out a little bit of wine into a broken vessel. And then after that, we say there's a way also to remember what they are. And the, 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 we take the initials, the initials of each one. So Datsach, that's Dom, Svardea, Kinim, blood, uh, frogs, and lice, and Adash. <clears throat> that stands for the next three plagues, right? Arov, uh, Dever, Shechin. And then the next four, Bachav. So that's the first letters. And in the beginning of each one, right, the Dom is the first of this order. Adash, the Arom, mixed animals, says we're, that is the second order. And <clears throat> the third, Barad, is the fourth, is the third order. Barad is the hail that came down. And each one, the first one of each one, it says in order that you should know. Maybe that's how they knew how to divide it up into th three groups. And because there's nothing in the world. Also, there's an, the Ari, he says like this. <clears throat> there's three reasons that Paro disagreed with God. <clears throat> and these three sets of plagues are coming to make Paro know that he's wrong. What are the three reasons? First of all, Paro disagreed with the very existence of God. He denied God and saying that it doesn't exist. He said, I don't know God. Therefore, in the first set of plagues, it says, but each one starts off with, you should know. Each one, each set. So the first set that says, you should know that I am God. That's how it says. What do you mean? And others know that God does exist. You're wrong. He does exist. Okay, so Paro will say, okay, you know what? I was wrong. God exists. But <clears throat> even if you want to say that God does exist, nevertheless, he exists, but he exists up in heaven, right? High up in the upper world, like Spinoza and these people said. Right? God is really, he doesn't really get involved in the world at all. Okay, and therefore, in the second group of plagues, it says, Ani Hashem Oretz. said, I am God in the world. <clears throat> I'm active in the world. The third plague, the third reason that Paro had to disagree with God is, <laughs> He said, okay, maybe God does care about the world and he's involved, but he's not able to fix up everything. He's involved, but there's certain things that he hasn't got any power over. Therefore, Paro said, Ain't a Yocholish and Oteba. For instance, Paro said, God, maybe your God can do all sorts of things, but he can't change nature. He's not better than my magicians. We're going to see later that the magicians of Paro, they could only make a thing, things appear to look like they're changed. They changed, but they couldn't really change. Alze said, Ki in Kamoni, the call of earth, there's nothing like God in the world. In other words, no one has the ability. <clears throat> to actually change nature, that God can change things however he wants. Here's an interesting one. <clears throat> the Kliyakar says that I see that a lot of all of the commentators, that everybody uh, gives their interpretation of the reasons for the 10 plagues. So I'm going to give my reasons also. Listen to this. He says, the first plague is blood. <clears throat> Why did Paro make the river? I mean, Why did God make the river turn into blood? Because Paro said 
I created the river and I made myself. <clears throat> and also because he threw the Jewish children into the river. So therefore, God said, I'm going to smite the river. And also all the fish are going to die in the river. We're going to see in a second. Why? Because he wanted to stop the Jewish people from being multiplying like fish. Be careful. This is Vidgu. Second plague was <clears throat> um, uh, frogs. Frogs, because why? <clears throat> God, he denied God, and he said, I don't know who God is. So therefore, came along the frogs, and the frogs did know God. What, how do you see the frogs knew God? Because it says the frogs are very cold. And the frogs, it says that the frogs would see, we'll see. The frogs were jumping everywhere inside of people, but also in the ovens. And it's the opposite of the nature of a frog usually runs away from fire. But because God commanded the frogs to jump in, so they, they did. The frogs listened to God, and Paro did not. Now, you, <clears throat> you, <clears throat> <clears throat> therefore, there were, and, and that's, that's another thing. Also, the river was swarming with frogs because one witness is like one, um, I, I'm sorry, if the guilty person admits, that's like 100 people testifying himself. And this, the, the river itself testified, right? The river itself was the source of this evil. He was the, that was the God. The river, the river itself testified to the greatness of God that all the, Frogs were jumping out of the river. Third plague was um, uh, fleas, 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 because <clears throat> it, it says a person that works hard. It says people that work hard. It says from the sweat there is a formed fleas. If a person doesn't wash himself, a fleas come from the, the sweat on the body. They're attracted to it or they're formed from it. So therefore, because he made them work hard in the field, so he was also filled with fleas. Fourth plague was a rove, mixed animals. Because the Jewish people were made to work like animals, like Rashi said, so therefore God sent animals on the Egyptians. The fifth plague is Dever. Endeavor means that their animals, the animals of the Egyptians died because the Jewish people, they were shepherds. And now that they had to work, so it meant that all of their flocks all died. So God said, I'll make all of your flocks die also. Shechin boils. <clears throat> boils because the Egyptians tried to separate the Jews from their wives, making them work hard. So therefore, God smote them with boils, which makes a marital intercourse difficult for the Egyptians. <clears throat> the uh, seventh plague was a, a uh, uh, what is it? Hail. It says there was hail with fire inside of the hill. Fire, it made a tremendously loud noise because Paro said, who is this God that I should listen to his voice? Therefore, he didn't want to listen to the voice of God. Therefore, God made a, this tremendous voice that like says, Kol Hashem Alamayim, Kol Hashem Chotziv, Kol Hashem, the tremendous noise of hail falling everywhere. Arbe, Arbe was locusts because he wanted to uh, limit the number of Jews that there were in the world. The word Arbe also means multiply, Arbe. So he smote him with Arbe. Arbe. Darkness. Because he caused the Jewish people that they had to hide away their children in the darkness, just like they had to hide away Moses. So therefore, he struck them <clears throat> with darkness. And finally, the firstborn died because he wanted to destroy the firstborn of God, namely the Jewish people. So therefore, uh, they, 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 yeah, therefore, and what did they do? Also, they threw the children into the sea. But here, in this case, God did not bring the sea upon them. They themselves ran into the sea, and they drowned it. That was in the... Okay, that's all. 
All right, <clears throat> the fish that was in the sea died, will all die, and the river will become, they say, uh, rotten. And the Egyptians could not drink water from the river. It was all made of blood, and all the fish were dying. <clears throat> they tried. Nilu, what do you mean? They, they, they were impossible. They couldn't find any. What do you mean, they Nilu? It means that they tried to do something, but they didn't succeed. What did they try to do? They tried to find some way to treat the water that it will be fitting to drink, and they just couldn't find it. <clears throat> so, so we didn't, this is what God said is going to happen. It's going to happen. So here it goes. God said to Moshe, speak to Aaron, take the staff, take it in your hand, smite, panata yadcha, spread your hand over the water of Egypt, <clears throat> on their rivers, on their on their rivers, on the streams, whatever, on the on the um, on their lakes, and on all gatherings of water will be blood. Blood will be all of there as Israel, even in the trees and even in the in the stones, blood. <clears throat> Why did God say to, to, to Aaron to do it? Why didn't Moses? Because the river, the Nile River protected Moses when uh, he was thrown into the river to save him from the, the, the soldiers of Paro, right? When he, when he was born. Therefore, he did not smite the river, <clears throat> not with blood and not with the uh, frogs. The frogs also came jumping out of the river. <clears throat> the Aaron did it. <clears throat> these are the rivers that come out. Okay, Yorahemi explains what are these different types of bodies of waters? What's a Yor? What's an Agam? The whole land of Israel, the uh, you know, whole land of Egypt, I'm sorry, <clears throat> even in their baths, no matter what, was, even the water which were in, in the vessels, the Eitzim of Anim, it says the waters that were in the vessels of stone and the vessels of wood. <clears throat> Yeah. Vayasukin. Okay, so that's it. Up to now, God was telling to Moses what to do and what's going to happen. So Moses and Aaron did it like God commanded. But Yoram Mata, Aaron lifted up his hand. He smote the water that was in the river in, in front of Paro, in front of all of his servants, and the whole business turned into blood. And the fish that were in the river immediately died, and the river started to smell. And the Egyptians couldn't drink any water from the river. And there was blood in the whole land of Egypt. It says, what does it mean the fish died? It says, because and this was a sign that uh, to the Egyptians that Moses was not doing the miracles. Moses and Aaron, they weren't doing the miracles by means of sorcery or some sort of witchcraft. <clears throat> because uh, witchcraft or sorcery cannot actually change the creation; it just makes things look differently. <clears throat> and wouldn't be it wouldn't if the, so there wouldn't actually be blood that would kill the fish that were there; wouldn't kill people. Therefore, so they could change like the the, the way it looked, the way it smelled, whatever. But they couldn't change the actual chemical. Uh, if, uh, they say uh, constitution of the thing. And therefore, it says the fish also died. This is a sign to Paro that <clears throat> what Moses and Aaron were doing actually changed nature. <clears throat> That's what it says. There was blood everywhere in Egypt, everywhere, even in the, in the baths and etc. <clears throat> the Khartoumi Mitzrayim, they tried to do the same thing, and they, 
but and they didn't, they couldn't, and the heart of Paro got hard, and he didn't listen to them, just like God commanded. Okay, the obvious question is, what do you mean they did the same thing? All the river, all the water in Egypt turned into blood. So how could the Egyptians do the same thing? There was no water left for them to change. How did they possibly do it? So he gives a couple of answers. One of the answers is, is that the Jews did have water. They only changed blood to the Egyptians. The Jews did have water. And in fact, it says another place that the Jews became rich because they sold water to the Egyptians. So <clears throat> the, 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 that was the water that they changed. That's one answer. Sort of, it's not really such a good answer because it says that anytime the Egyptians took possession of any water, it automatically turned into blood. That's another, another answer is that only the water that was revealed in the rivers, etc., but water that was under the ground, it didn't become blood. And it was that water. How do you know they wanted water from under the ground? Because it says, the Yachbru called Mitzrayim Sivivoti Yar, that the, the Egyptians dug into the for water to drink because they couldn't drink the water from the river. So, in other words, maybe they, when they would put, put, let's say, a straw into the water, they wouldn't touch it. They could, maybe there was water. So, in that way, they could finally find some water. Anyway, however it was, there he says, yeah. Here it says, Roy, for. That's what that's what the Orachim asks. Uh, how did the how did they find any water? So he says he thought maybe it could be that it was only the water that was under the ground. That that's where they found. They dug in. And another explanation is that the Jewish people they became rich from this plague because they were selling water to the Egyptians. Anyway, look over there, but they couldn't. In any case, we already saw that this didn't make any effect on Paro, even though that he saw clearly that this was coming from God because it actually changed the nature of the water, and his, his uh, sorcerers couldn't do that. So Paro went back to his house, and he didn't put his mind to this either. That's what we said. They dug, and they couldn't find any water. They're past seven days after this first plague, and God smoke, spoke seven days. He says, how do you know it's seven days? The, the river did not not go back to its uh, original state. That every single plague was one week, a quarter of the month, and then there were three weeks they had to think about it and to decide, Paro had to think about it and decide if he was going to change his mind or not. Each one of the plagues. God said to Moses, go to Paro, Selling, this is what God says. Send my people, let my people go, and they will serve me. And if you don't serve me, then and your whole land is going to be filled with frogs. And this is what we're going to talk about, God willing, tomorrow. This Torah portion, Parsha's Voera, has the first seven plagues. And next week in Bo is going to be the next three plagues. So let's do as many as we can today. Have a good day with Mashiach now, and hope to see you tomorrow at 8.15 in the morning. Mm. Goodbye, Rabbi.